In this tutorial, we're going to design the foundation requirement for latticed towers. The latticed towers are elements that are subjected to a high overton moment, which makes impractical designs a split or mat foundation to support the load transmitted by the superstructure to the necessary dimensions required and the cost that would imply. That is why the foundation for latticed towers are piles. The piles are designed to support uplift and compression force due self-weight, wind load, seismic load and overtoning moment. In this picture are the forces that are acting in the latticed tower. The data is in this table, where the soil report given a soil type of inorganic clay of low plasticity. The soil bearing capacity is 4 kilopounds per feet. The compressive strength of the concrete is 432 kilopounds per feet. The effective friction angle is 37 degrees and the specific weight of the soil is 100 pounds cubic feet. The bearing capacity of the pile required to support the loads transferred from the latticed tower according with the paragraph of B from section 6.3.1.1 of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering 691 standard is calculated with this equation, where QU is the ultimate bearing capacity of the pile, QT is the tip bearing resistance, and QS is the skin friction, also called the pile skin resistance capacity. The tip bearing resistance is calculated with this equation, where C is the equation of the soil, and C is the equation influence, which for clay is equal to 9 and A is the area of the tip. To calculate the tip bearing resistance, the first things that we are going to do is calculate the diameter required for the pipes to the compression force with this equation, where PU is the ultimate compression force and FC is the compressive strength of the concrete, giving a result of 1.25 feet, but according with IEEE 691 standard in section 5.3 recommend a minimum diameter of 2.5 feet. The next step is to calculate the equation of the soil with this equation, where sigma is the bearing capacity of the soil resulting in 2 kPa pounds square feet. And finally, the pile tip resistance is 88.36 kilo pounds. Now we proceed to calculate the skin resistance capacity with this equation, where alpha is the adhesion factor which is calculated with this equation, where C1 is calculated with this equation, and is a factor that depends on the lateral coefficient pressure K that depends on the method of the pile installation, and is taken between 0.5 and 0.6 for both piles, and delta is the effective friction angle that for this case is 37 degrees. Q is the effective overboarding pressure and is calculated with this equation, where gamma S is the specific weight of the soil, H is the height of the pile, and SU is the drained shear capacity. C is the equation factor and AF is the area of the pile skin. Resolving, C1 results in 0.45, and the drained shear strength SU resulting in 2 kilopounds square feet. The next step is calculate the effective overboarding pressure for H is the incognita to solve. So this equation stays as 100 times H. Now we insert all these values to the equation of the adhesion factor and solving based on the incognita H given 0.170 times H by the power of 0.45. The next step is calculate the pi skin resistance capacity giving a result of 1.844H by the power of 1.45. Now we proceed to calculate the rearing capacity of the pi with this equation, where phi is the safety factor that according with the Telecommunication Industry Association's 222G standard in section 9.4 is equal to 2. QU is the ultimate compression capacity. 
QT is the tip resistance and QS is the skin resistance given this equation. Now we solve H for the equation given a result of 36.5 feet. The next step is verify the uplift capacity of the pipe with the equation of the section 5.3.2.1 of the IEEE 691 standard, where QS is the uplift resistance, W is the weight of the shaft, and QS is the skin resistance of the shaft, and is calculated with this equation, where TB are the dimension of the pipe, resulting in 340 kilopounds. The weight of the pipe is 26.88 kilopounds, making the comparison with the uplift force from the analysis the verification pass. The next step is the term the restraint condition of the pile. In the case of the lattice tower, normally are free head piles. Now, we calculate the internal shear force, moment and deflection of the pile with the wrist and mantle method with these equations, where V, M and Y are the shear, moment and deflection respectively. A, V, A, N and A, Y are factors and are tabulated in graphics that you can find in specialized books. H is the horizontal force and T is the stiffness factor. The stiffness factor is calculated with this equation for normal consolidated clays, where E, I are the modulus of elasticity and the inertia of the pile, and N, H is the constant of modulus of subgrade reaction, which value is 4.74 kilopounds cubic feet for normal consolidated clays, resulting in 11.41 feet. And verify if is a rigid or flexible pile by dividing the length of the pile to the thickness factor. The result is 3.19, which means it's in the flexible side but is enough rigid to not take in consideration the inelastic range and calculated in the elastic range. After calculating the factors AB, AM and AY, was constructed the graphic of the flexion, bending moment and shear force that act in the pile to the horizontal force transmitted from the lattice tower. The maximum shear force is 16.23 kilopounds. The maximum bending moment is 143.95 kilopounds feet and the maximum deflection at the top of the pile is 0.77 inches. With these values, we proceed to verify that the factor as a low shear force and bending moment that act in the pile don't exceed the nominal capacity of axle load, shear force and bending moment allowed by the American Concrete Institute 380 standard and calculate the longitudinal and transfer reinforcement required by the pile. First, we calculate the maximum allowable compressed restraint according with table 13.4.2.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard, where 5 is a reduction factor from table 13.4.3.2 equal to 0.55, FC is the compressive restraint of the concrete, and AG is the gross section area of the pile, resulting in a compressive strain of 350 kilopounds. The compressive force transmitted is 211.3 kilopounds. This means that the reinforcement isn't required. However, the American Concrete Institute 380 standard in the table 18.13.5.7.1 require a minimum of 0.5% of longitudinal reinforcement ratio for a design category C, D, E or F. The result is 3.53 square inches. We will use 8 bar number 6. The next step is calculate the nominal moment capacity of the pile through the stress strain cook diagram. Normally, the least capacity occurs in the tension phase of the shape. Solving this equation, the nominal moment capacity is 270.26 kilopound feet which is greater than the factor bending moment that acts in the pile. The last step is calculate the nominal shear capacity and the shear reinforcement. 
the nominal shore capacity is calculated with the equation of the table 22.5.5.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard, giving a result of 131.4 kilopounds, which is greater than the factor shear force that act in the pile. The shear enforcement is calculated with the least separation between the equations of the section 10.6.2.2 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard, and the minimum bar type according to the table 18.13.5.7.1 is number 4. The confinement zone is 3 diameters of the pile from the top, giving a result of 7.5 feet. Separation of the shear reinforcement in the confinement zone in accordance with section 18.7.5.3 is the least of this equation. The separation of the spirals is 3 inches. The separation of the spirals on the remainder pine length is the least of this equation in accordance with the table 18.13.5.7.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard. The least gap is 6 inches. In this picture, we can view the final configuration of the pile. With this, conclude this tutorial.